Hello and welcome back to a new episode of HKEX Voice, our podcast on the latest developments of Hong Kong and the region's financial markets. I'm your host, Jeffrey Young. HKEX has just launched a consultation on listing reforms of Gen, with an aim to provide a supportive environment where small and medium-sized enterprises can thrive. We are pleased to have back here Catherine Ng, HKEX's head of listing, on the podcast. She will tell us more about the rationale behind the Gen reform and what this means to the broader market. Welcome back on the podcast, Catherine. Thank you, Jeff. Now, Catherine, can you walk us through the thinking of this reform that has been announced, and what does this mean to the market? You know, SMEs have long been considered the backbone of the global economy, driving innovation, employment, and economic growth. Mm-hmm. As a leading global exchange, we're committed to providing a supportive environment where SMEs can thrive, ultimately contributing to the continual prosperity of Hong Kong and the global economy. Jam is positioned as an important platform for SMEs seeking long-term corporate investment to sustain their innovation, value creation, and growth. However, during the past few years, the number of listings and funds raised on Jam have declined significantly due to various factors. Mm-hmm. And we want to improve the appeal of Jam to our issuers as well as our investors. And hence, we've proposed this consultation and looking for market feedback. Of course. Um, so, Catherine. I understand that HKX conducted a pre-consultation review of the positioning of GEM prior to the launch of uh, this consultation paper. What were the key findings and comments from the stakeholders that uh, the exchange has spoken to? Thanks, Jeff. A lot of work has gone into it before we published this consultation, and we've worked with a broad range of stakeholders to solicit their views and feedback on GEM and how to take it forward in the future. Mm-hmm. Since the implementation of the market quality reforms back in 2018, a considerable number of SME stakeholders have asked the exchange to reinstate the streamlined transfer mechanism to the main board. They believe that this is an efficient and transparent way for JAM issuers to transfer to the main board and would significantly enhance JAM's attractiveness. There wasn't much demand, though, for lowering the listing thresholds of JAM because our listing requirements and threshold on JAM are amongst the lowest for the secondary board compared to their international peers. In contrast, stakeholders felt that exchange should maintain a high listing eligibility requirements and continue obligations to ensure that only high quality issuers are eligible to list on JAM and stay listed on JAM. They felt this would help maintain market quality and increase investor confidence in the long run. Some institutional investors have noted that our requirement of positive operating cash flow may prevent high-growth companies from listing on JAM. They believe that Hong Kong would benefit from a pipeline of SME issuers because of its status as an international financial center and a gateway to mainland China. There was also some feedback that JAM's continuing listing obligations is high, and that JAM's quarterly financial reporting requirement further increases the compliance costs of JAM issuers compared to their counterparts on the main board. So Catherine, that is very useful feedback. So based on that, what are HKX's proposals in this consultation paper? In response to these feedback, we've designed a package of reforms and proposals um, to go out for public consultation. First of all, we're proposing to introduce a new streamlined transfer mechanism to allow qualified SMEs to transfer to the main board with a reduced regulatory requirement and at a much lower cost. That means not requiring them to appoint sponsors or to publish a prospectus. Secondly, we're proposing a new eligibility requirement that aims to drive new listings of quality and high growth companies focusing on R&D, but currently does not have sufficient track record of operating cash flow. We believe that this alternative test has the potential to attract research-driven growth companies from Hong Kong, the Greater Bay Area, and beyond. Thirdly, to align some of the JAM ongoing compliance practices with those of main board, we are proposing to remove quarterly reporting requirements and also align GEMS issuers' ongoing compliance officer and compliance advisor obligations with those of the main board. Fourthly, we are proposing to reduce the post-IPO 24-month lockup period imposed on controlling shareholders of GEM issuers to 12 months. This, again, is in alignment with current main board requirements. These are just some of our key proposals. 
but our package as a whole is aimed at long-term development rather than a short-term solution. We want to create a platform for quality companies to grow beyond their current size and create a home for quality SMEs with future potentials. This is a proposal that is designed for today and fit for purpose. Indeed. Catherine, if I can delve into some of the proposals you just mentioned, why is the exchange reinstating this transfer pathway from GEM to the main board? I think whatever proposal we are putting forward, we need to look at it against the backdrop of today's environment. How is looking today? You know, at the time back then, the transfer route was viewed as an opportunity for regulatory arbitrage between the main board and GEM. Mm. It may have led to an increase in shell activities. Measures were taken to address these market concerns, including raising the minimum profit and market capitalization thresholds for main board listing, introducing a more robust delisting framework and improving reverse takeover rules to reduce so-called backdoor listing. Shell's activities have largely ceased that since. We therefore propose to introduce a new transfer mechanism coupled with a pre-transfer liquidity requirement that can address the previous regulatory concerns, but also allow qualified SMEs to move to the main board to achieve greater success without incurring the additional time and expenses of appointing sponsors and publishing a prospectus. Now, so how will this route, this reinstatement of this route, incentivize more companies to choose a GEM listing? If you think about it, today's GEMS company will have to appoint a sponsor and publish a prospectus at the point of listing GEM, and again when they transfer to the main board. So we've seen a lot of companies who might be interested in listing, but felt that they would rather wait until they've grown big enough for the main board to list then in order to avoid appointing a sponsor and publishing a prospectus twice. So if we allow a more streamlined transfer, we expect that companies who would like to come for a listing, who see the benefit of a listing, be incentivized to apply earlier because they would only have to appoint a sponsor once and publish a prospectus once. Mm, that makes sense. Now, Catherine, turning to the new eligibility test, could you explain to us a bit more about why you're introducing this alternate route? I think this is, again, something that we're looking at what is fit for today's purpose. Cash flow profit is no longer the only hallmark of a quality companies. This is something that um, we've seen with the introduction of 18C, which targets specialist technology companies. In that consultation and that consultation feedback, it was very clear that investors today don't see profit or cash flow as the only threshold or the only identifier of a quality companies. We hope that these new requirements will help more SMEs with high growth potential seek listing on GEM, and they will eventually be able to move on to the main board. So Catherine, why is the exchange considering to align the reporting requirements for GEM with that of the main board? I think for with any kind of reporting, ultimately what we want is what is best for the company. We want um, GEM companies to be able to listen to their stakeholders, and we want to provide this flexibility. We noticed that a lot of the international stock exchanges have moved away from quarterly reporting, and we are really open to recommendations, I think. Our proposal to make quarterly reporting requirement not mandatory may help um, increase the attractiveness of listing on JAM, and it will also align this with the requirement of the main board. During the process of our engagement with our various stakeholders, including listed issuers, investors, as well as our regulator, we heard many views on quarterly reporting. And with that feedback, we formulated this proposal. So how long will the consultation last and when will the new measures come into effect? The consultation period will last approximately six weeks. Our consultation paper is available on our website today. Please take a look and we welcome your feedback. We will carefully consider all feedback received and make any adjustments before finalizing the rules. We hope that the rules will take effect from early 2024. Thank you, Catherine. And obviously, we'll look forward to all the feedback from the market. Uh, thanks again for your time today, Catherine. Thank you, Jeff. If you want to learn more about this podcast, 
this consultation paper and HKX's markets, please visit us at our website at hkex.com.hk. From all of us at HKEX Voice, thank you for listening and keep an ear out for our next episode. So long.